My name is Natasha Holland, and today we're going to continue to talk about our beauty, about our health, and about our youth. In the first part, we were talking how to prevent sickness, and here today we're going to talk about what do we do when we get sick. And I would like to read to you uh, from Proverbs 18:14. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? As we can see from this scripture, we need a strong spirit. And to have a strong spirit, what do we need? It's to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. First of all, we need to receive the baptism of of the Holy Spirit, which is mean emerging in the Holy Spirit, and it's sim simply done by faith. And uh, this is something about we're going to talk a bit later. And what do we need? What else do we need? We need to saturate ourselves with the Word of God. We need to become like a sponge, which is filled up with the water. In the same way, we need to be filled up with the Word of God. So when devil attempt to touch us, the only Word of God which will come out, out of us. But if you already got sick, so then you just put yourself, surround yourself with the Word of God so your mind will be changed, so your mind will be renewed. And you just listen to different preaching, and teach it and read the word. Fill yourself up and fill yourself up. And then your mind will start to speak the word. When the devil attacking you with the negative thoughts, you will be rejecting this hours with the word of God. And it's what you need. We would need to learn think right and speak right. Speak right words about ourselves. As you pray, and you command the sickness to leave from your body, then you will talk about yourself and think about yourself as you already healed. And you act as you already healed. So you don't try to put something on yourself to comfort you uh, or take lots of lots of pills because you're sick, you know, and, but you speak the word. But of course, if your face is not there yet, then yes, you take tablets and then it's a different story. Then your face is relying on the tablets and the medicine. But of course, don't die, be healed in any way. And it's good. And I would like to read to you uh, from Romans 12, 2. And do not be confirmed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind for you to prove what is the good and well-pleasing and perfect will of God. And here in the scripture we can see how it's progression in your face. So it's first a good, good will of God, which is, it is good will of God for you to be healed. Don't stay sick. Receive from the Lord this help, these promises of healing. And the next stage is uh, well-pleasing, or in some translation it says acceptable. So this is when you actually have a divine health. You're just healthy. And how do you do this? For some people would say this is impossible, but it is the way I live. Whenever sickness come to me, I defeat it straight away. I am not allowed myself for sickness to come into my body. And if it's, it is devil attention, he, he does try, I would just reject it and I will rebuke it in the name of Jesus and stop it. And it does work in my life. I am not perfect in it, but I am going forward and I am receiving more and more revelation from the Lord about this. So it is possible. And many of you know this man who used to live in 800s and it's John G. Lake. 
and, and many of you know the story and for those who don't know I'll tell you now and this is when John Lake was walking around uh, to hospitals with his team of people who called uh, they was like medical sisters and brothers and, and they were uh, healing people in such a way that some hospitals were simply being closed and whenever they would sit down and they pray for person and if person is not healed straight away they would sit down and teach the word and then they would still the person would still receive the healing the healing was always being received and uh, there was a story like uh, one of the doctors came to him and said how wonderful it is that we have this vaccine and uh, John Jalek answered no I don't have any and he said how you don't have you you're not being vaccinated wow how do you working like this you're not afraid and he said watch this and it was a man's body who already died and it was a plague going around and people were dying and he came near one man and he touched his uh, lip and it was a firm form of uh, saliva there and, and he touched like that and he go visit under microscope and they both looking at his hand and all these viruses were dying right in front of their eyes and it was amazing and this is a third stage which is bible in romans 12 to talking about and it's a perfect will of god and it's stage which we all need to be in which we need to strive to be in it's when we so much filled with the word of god with his power and anointing that no virus no sickness no disease can stay in our bodies or near us if we come to people if we touch people they will be healed and this would be like Jesus was saying that what I did you will do and more you will do but let us do first what Jesus did and we will be like uh, Peter whose shadow was touching people people and people get healed or like Paul when he gives his napkins away and uh, people got healed from his anointing and this is something we need to be looking forward to and pray for and strive to Isaiah 53 5 but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities upon him was chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed or it says in amplified translation made whole so because of that because bible tells us that jesus took all our sicknesses and diseases together with our sins we can say that all symptoms which come in towards us they are lying symptoms they are actually false symptoms and you know this word in greek which is salvation translated like sozer and this word include not just salvation of our soul but it's actually salvation of all our bodies which is mean wholeness which is mean um, healing and which is mean also to be free from all demonic oppression from all evil spirits or their attacks so this is amazing and strong word and now I would like to tell you my dream which is connected to this false symptoms which comes on us and this is quite interesting and very weird dream because it took me a bit to understand what is it God tried to tell me through it and in my dream I was in my room and I look at that window and I see on a balcony a man, a strange man, a stranger, I did know him and he was knocking in a window and saying I'm cold please let me in and in my mind I'm realizing from from you know these films when they're talking about somebody's lover 
jump on a balcony downstairs, try to escape from a husband who just returned suddenly. So it was like that in my story and in my dream. And somehow I felt sorry for that man. And I opened up my balcony and I let him in. And he walked through and he went into our living room and he got somewhere on the sofa, put this blanket over him and tried to comfort himself, himself and warm up there. And then I suddenly look up and this angry man running towards me uh, from the door. And I look at him and, he, and it was the husband not my husband, somebody else's husband. And he was angry and he was trying to tell me off and saying, what have you done? And for some moment I was standing and tried to get over what is happening. And then uh, I'm kind of realizing, I'm saying, and what are you doing here? Get out of here, get out of my house. And then I, wake up and you know I was start to think Lord what is it what a weird dream and I was realizing that Lord was trying to tell me something through that dream and Lord started to explain me me after I've been praying he said you know it's same with you the this lover somebody else lover it's not your lover it's a stranger and he has nothing to do with you. This lover, it's a false symptoms which knocking at your window, uh, like a thief knocking and trying to get. And if you would feel pity or sorry for him and let him in and comfort him by allowing him to be warm up and feel sorry for him, then you watch the sickness which is that angry husband will run into your door and walk in and you not allowed him in and you stand against him. So this was uh, interpretation of this very strange dream and I just pray that it will speak to you. So what we do, we do not allow a false symptoms to come to us and because of Jesus and his sacrifice and what he done on the cross, all symptoms are false symptoms. And when they come on you, they come slowly. They'll not come like suddenly and you hope you lie in it. Usually and more likely they come like a little, little, little thing which is knocking at your either what you have headaches or it's touch of pain or whatever else and then in this moment we have to rebuke this symptom, we have to command it to leave, we have to declare it a false symptom and say get out, I am not letting you in, you have nothing to do with, with me, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus and we need to use our authority. Luke 10 19 Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And I would like to tell you a story, a vision which I have seen. You know, we have to know who we are in Christ. We need to know our authority. We need to understand that Jesus already defeated demons. He defeat devil. He is under our feet. And we need to know our authority and understand and keep him there. For sometimes Christians, and uh, sometimes in some stage of my life, I had it, a fear towards the devil. But Lord was taught me and he teach me to be over it, to understand that it's him who is fighting for us. It's his Power and his authority which we use it. So when we're doing this, when we stand against our enemy, we should not think of us. We should think of the Lord who is using us and work through us and he who is put devil under the right place where he's supposed to be. And once, you know, we had uh, one friend in the church whose husband had a cancer and she was uh, 
so frightened by it. She invited Christians, all of us who whoever can come to pray for her husband. And we were sitting together in a circle and we were praying and she had fear and uh, she was um, telling us that those who pray and stand against, they should have people next to them who pray and uh, against demonic to help them to pray over them. So it's complicated. Somehow when it's become complicated, too complicated, it's not actually the word. Because Lord give us everything very simple. Devil is under our feet. And as, as we were praying, I saw a vision. I saw this bucket. You know, bucket where we carry water in. This kind of bucket. And I was standing on the top of this bucket. And I saw that little demons like that, they were underneath of it. They were inside this bucket. And I was standing on the top of it, and Lord was saying to me, till you keep them under your feet, they will be there, they won't be able to come out. So what I, will, I am trying to say, that we have to keep devil there where he belongs. We have to know and understand that the one who is in us, he is stronger, incredibly, much more stronger than the devil or any of his demons or devils. And also Ephesians 1 from the verse 17, and I'm going to read to you, that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what, who believe according to the working of his mighty power and in another translation aramaic uh, it's actually say and what is the excellence of the greatness of his power in us? In Russian translation, it also tells in us. So it's talking about this power in us, inward. When I, in one occasion, I was studying this place and once I get to the verse 19 and I will start to reading it, and you know how it's people sometimes telling you, this scripture jump into me. It's exactly what was happened. When scripture jump into your eyes or jump into your spirit, what happens, you receive a revelation from the Lord. And it just open up that this power, this incredible, enormous God power, so huge, the power which raised Christ from the dead, it's in me. It was overwhelming and I realized that and I knew it's his power it's by his mighty work but it's in me and I can use this power and it was such a joy and it was so overwhelming that it's true and it's mine for that moment and now I know that and we need to understand and we need to know our authority of the believer and I would like to tell you another story, which is my dream. It's actually not quite the whole dream, but it started with my dream. When, when I was studying Believer's Authority um, from the Bible, and I saw once this dream when demons was attacking me. You know, sometimes we go over the top when we're studying about Believer's Authority. We start to see uh, devil under each bush and in each corner and we start to go over the top with rebuking and uh, defeating and, and it's good in a way that we're doing it but sometimes we forget that and it fills all of our time and all we're doing is this and we've got to be very careful we have to remember to worship our Lord we have to remember that when we start to praise Lord all demons are disappear so we need to give even more time 
to the Lord and focus even more on Him rather than on demonic. But yes, it, it's needed and it has a place in our lives and we need to know our authority. So what was happened with me? I was so scared in my dream of those attacks, so I woke up. And as I woke up, I start to pray in tongues. And as I pray, I command. I just spoke with such a power came out from me. And I said, in the name of Jesus, get out. <laughs> and as I say, said this, I had this next to the side of my bed. I had a pencil. And this pencil, it was just like, jump up forward not just dropped and I didn't touch it and it not just dropped down it was just jumped forward like that and you know it was a bit scary <laughs> and for a long time I used to think that it must have been some kind of demon sitting next to me and uh, I was I uh, thought they would just jump like that and move the pencil but now I came to a different conclusion. What I'm thinking, it's, uh, I think it's this power which is within me, God's power, not my power, which is just raised up and with all this might, it just been come out out of my mouth and with the word which been spoken, it just moved the pencil. It's what I'm thinking now about it. And it's because the word which comes out out of my mouth, they not come back to me empty handed but they do the work I send them to do, and they complete the assignment I give them. And it's very good for us to declare the word of God, to send the words of God to complete the assignment. And this actually scripture, it's Jesus spoke about himself. But we can use the scripture for ourselves as well, as well, because our words are powerful. We are made in the image of God and we need to remember who we are, that we are children of God and we have this power which is in us. And we need to learn to decree and declare words. And especially when you got sick, you have to take those words from God as you surround yourself with the Word of God and saturate yourself in the Word of God, if you start to listen all this preaching and teaching and the Bible itself, you can switch on, switch on Bible and listen to it and listen scriptures, write down scriptures for yourself, write down scriptures which you which speak to you, take a notebook and write and write and speak out so declare and decree the word of of God and I would like to share with you what I do and you know I I li like to write scripture down and I have some notebooks and I have many of them and they all have their own special purpose like this one Actually, I write down the word of God when I spend time with the Lord and I write down if, if Lord tells me something, I would write down here. Also, I write down here my um, messages when I prepare. And uh, I have some more and I would like to show you this all those notebooks which I have. And for example, this one. It's my daughter give it to me for a birthday. This notebook is for scriptures. This is what I'm talking about. I write down scriptures here. Uh, whatever I need, whatever I'm staying in faith for, I would write down scriptures down here. And we have this time with my daughter when we sit down, we take communion and then we declare and decree scriptures. And it's usually at evening before we go to bed. And just take scriptures with Lord speaks. If you read your Bible, some scriptures will be speaking into your heart. Write them out. If you ill, if you sick, you would probably, if you have something very dangerous, you know, some kind of uh, sickness like cancer or some kind of sickness which is uh, treating to your life, 
you would give all attention to yourself and to your healing what you do it doesn't mean I'm not saying you do not go to doctors but if you put yourself into the Bible into the Word of God you might not needed the doctor and especially when the doctor said they cannot help and if you not prepare yourself beforehand you can still study the Bible and you can still defeat the sickness you can do it and you just be strong in it and you just spend time cut yourself off from everything around TV Facebook's or anything like this don't complain about things which happening to you to people and share oh how poor me don't do this but write down scriptures and declare them speak the, uh, them out to god write them down and uh, maybe it would be five scriptures maybe ten as many as lord will give it to you and speak to them after some time you would know them by heart and then you would be able to speak those scriptures out anytime every time the negative thought will come to you stand against it, it. don't ignore it just speak back and you double get out out of my way i am healed by the stripes of the christ jesus and unto me the sun rise up and the healing in his wings and all my body is glowing with health and my very bones vibrating with life and then you have your own scriptures and you speak speak them out so this is very important and this one, this notebook, I use when I put notes when I listen to anybody on um, internet. So if you listen to someone, let it be someone who speak about healing, about authority. So take your notebook, write down, conspect your, the word you listen and then go back into Bible, look at it and ask God about it and this scriptures will be speaking to you back so give yourself to Bible and give yourself to God this one oh, it's been already <laughs> uh, this one actually it uh, says ideas hopes and dreams so and I'm I usually would write down here my ideas hopes and dreams and my night dreams when I if I see uh, God will speak to me through the night and if i see it's actually from god this dream i will write down and sometimes i would talk about it even on my videos and i would uh, speak to people because those dreams are they actually encouraging me if they come from god and they helping me a lot so i advise you to do this and another uh, book it uh, came to me from Washington and it's been given to me by my spiritual daughter and it's very uh, special because of it and it's actually prayer journal and now I start using this so I love all this books and writing it's just something what I like so and it will be good for you to do things like that and uh, increase yourself in the Lord get closer to the Lord and uh, you will win because you are winner